Hello everyone, I'm Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellyn, Illinois. And this video is going to take a look at stacks, queues, and double-ended queues, otherwise known as DECs, in the C++ programming language. So what's cool about this is that uh, we pretty much have an understanding already of what a stack is, what a queue is. Maybe not so much a double-ended queue, but we'll see that it's kind of a combination of the two. So. Um, let me click here. And so moving on to the first slides. So we're going to start by taking a look at what a stack is. And again, you should have a pretty understand, a pretty well, a pretty good understanding at the high level of what a stack already is. So it is a last in, first out data structure. So think of a stack. You know, like it's like a, like plates in a cafeteria or like plates at home. So I'm just going to place this. This is just think of this as the ground. And so if I put plate A down, and let me just real quick here, just center this and say plate A, and I can put plate B on top and plate C after that and so forth and so on, it pretty much mirrors exactly what you would expect, that you would have a series of plates or a series of data stacked on top of each other. And so what we use in the real world when it comes to computer science, like we do this, and if you ever take the assembly language course, you will see this over and over and over again. It is such a foundational part of what our, pro our programs are doing what our computers are doing under the hood when it comes to returning addresses for function calls and passing parameters. This call stack is just pushed and popped just relentlessly nonstop over and over and over again and the computer seems to handle it just fine so you know that is a very good reason for why we have a stack uh, data structure here in computer science. So uh, you, there's obviously a difference between anything that we would create here in like you know under the hood for like our implementation of a stack or in this case a queue or a stack versus something that the standard template library would do but in our case it's a fixed size implementation so I set it up you know I would say like oh I can only put 10 things you know maybe these these plates are only so heavy they can only handle six or seven of them and then I, they break. I don't know, I'm just coming up with something that might be a real world example of why you just can't keep stacking plates on top of each other. And so that static way of doing things is a fixed size versus something the standard template library can do. As long as there's memory on my computer, I can go over and over and over again and just keep pushing stuff onto the stack and then popping things off as well. So st always static versus dynamic. Compile time is static, always remember that and dynamic is runtime. So dynamic is something that can always be done when you need to resize something at runtime that's dynamic and something that you can't resize at runtime is static. So just to say the same exact example, the last in first out nature. So what you know the top of the stack is basically the only plate that I can touch. So you know in the real world you could probably go in and grab and pluck one of them out and I do that all the time for plates and things like that in my cupboard, but you can't really do that. This data structure doesn't allow for that. So the last in, first out. So the first in is the last out, right? Because it takes me, it take a lot of effort to get this down to get to the last element, but it's really easy just to grab the first one because that was the last one I put in. So we're going to see, so, and, and this video is only going to cover the high level understanding of this, and there will be supplemental videos that take care of the the lower level details of how to do this in pure C++. So we're going to see that all of these data structures today are what we call adapter classes. And that means that we can take data structures that already exist, in our case either the vector or maybe a linked list, things that we haven't necessarily talked about, but we can use those data structures and kind of adapt them to suit the need of what a stack is and what a queue is and what a double-ended queue is. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel so much as we have to take the existing data structure and just jam it around so that it works for whatever it is we're trying to do with that data structure. So push and pop, definitely something, right? Like pushing is very similar to what I would do with my call stack in that assembly language example. And if starting from scratch here, I would say, okay, I'm going to push A onto my stack. I'm going to push B and then I can pop. And when I pop, I take whatever's at the top and I'll take the B off. I mean, very commonsensical stuff, right? Basically taking whatever the top plate off is a push, putting a new plate on, I'm sorry, taking something off is a pop, putting something new on is a push. 
So other functions that might exist in different implementations. Uh, is full, is empty, you know, is, is empty is how is basically is there a non-zero number of elements? And is full would be, you know, basically however many size elements I set aside when I started this thing, have I used them all? So pretty simple stuff. And again, pushes and pops, push, push, push. We've already shown this. And then pop, pop, pop. And so again, right now at a high level understanding, let's not worry about what can go wrong. Let's just understand the, you know, the high level understanding. So this would be a form of, a, of a implementation of this. Maybe it's a little too involved. I mean, just meaning like you'll see that when we get to the standard template library, we actually use a vector or a double-ended queue to do all of this work for the stack or the queue. So it really, it really doesn't have to be this complicated to have an int pointer and do all sorts of crazy stuff. We can, we're going to allow to use the standard template library uh, containers to, and adapt them to our needs. So if you want to pay attention to this, take a look at that, see what, how the functionality would work here for an integer stack. But otherwise, I can move on to the next part of this, which is you know, it's like dynamic stacks. So as I was saying, a, you know, the static stack is very stationary. If, it's 10, if it starts with a size of 10, it stays at a size of 10. And so consider that versus the idea of a vector. The vector can resize. As I keep adding and adding and adding more elements, it can resize. And the same thing could occur here as a stack. So they can grow and shrink as needed. And obviously, as long as the operating system has memory to give, I could go crazy on this thing and just go, you know, keep adding, keep adding, just like I can with a vector. And so uh, I don't like this because it says implemented as a linked list. We're going to see that under the hood, it's actually uh, the default implementation is a double-ended queue. So that is actually an incorrect statement in that slide. So let's see, implementing this anything, this stack, we can program our own routines for this. And you're in class assignment if you're in my class, if you're not watching this as just part of, part of something you see on the internet. If you're in my class, you will be basically implementing and programming your own routines, but you'll still be just using the routines and the function calls of the vector and or the double-ended queue to get this thing to work. So it's not going to be too complicated of work. And so we'll also see, again, in future lectures that we can implement this using the standard template library. So again, this class, we show you the ideas, we show you how things work under the hood. We've already done vectors, and we're going to be doing linked lists and sets and all sorts of other things. And they go, once we have that understanding, always forevermore, we're going to push over to the standard template library to uh, keep going. Because the real world, you don't reinvent the wheel. You're going to use the standard template library, or if you're using other languages, you will use those libraries. You're not going to reinvent every single time in every language that you do. So again, we'll save this for another time, but, but here, you know, so if you want to take a look through this part, I'll just kind of just talk real fast that, of course, there's a whole interface, and it's very similar since it's standard and it's templated and it's part of the library, that you'll see very, a lot of similarities and just a few differences when it comes to how the, the syntax and how the thing is architected. So again, we don't have to worry about all of this so much, so just, so just kind of go through it. So that, that's how a stack works. And so now a queue. So I can think of, you know, I can kind of think of a queue slightly differently here, or I can think of it, you know, stack uses gravity basically to hold things down, but I can think of something like this as a queue. You, a queue, you know, that's, just think of it as a line. You get in line, right? Like, and so it's first in, first out. The first person in line at the grocery store when it's time, you know, the next person gets to go. So if this time around they go, oh, I'll put A in. Oh, let me center these things one more time. So I say, okay, A goes in first, and I guess we're just presuming everything's going, you know, normal left to right here. So this is the first one in, and I go, oh, I'll add a B, I'll add a C, I'll add a D, I'll add an E. And in this case, if I'm using a static size, I'm full, right? Just coming back to the same example. But anyway, so since I'm here, you go, oh, okay, A was the first in. So if I wanted to pop the first one off, it would be the A. So it's a complete opposite when it comes to the you know, last in versus first in. So you know, people in line at the theater box office, print jobs sent to a printer. Yeah, basically the printer handles things as they come. And so if, you know, if someone prints 600 pages, yours usually comes right after page 600 because, you know, you are next in line and it's handling the customer in front of you. 
Just like, you know, just like things in real life too, right? If you just went to talk to someone at the bank or something like that, like it's the same exact thought process. But ultimately everything is the same when it comes to implementation because it's using the same double-ended queue or vector data structure under the hood. Um, so if we created our own, we would probably create something more static just as we're at least when starting out the implementation of the thing and then turn it maybe a little more dynamic, a little more flexible, a little more awesome as we made this thing, uh, you know, made this, made this thing more complex. But dynamic variable size, and again, it's not necessarily, you can make it implemented as a linked list, but the default is actually a double-ended queue, at least in the C++ line. So what do we have here that's a little different? So, you know, so now, instead of just looking at the top every single time, I actually have two things to maintain. So coming back to this example, I have a front and I have a rear. Because this time around, instead of everything going from the top of the stack when it comes to you know, pushing and popping, the pops come from the, the front and the pushes go to the back. So there's a front and a rear. We like to use back when it comes to the, the terminology and the syntax of the API. And they like to use the terms NQ and DQ, and I don't necessarily care for that at all. Push and pop is what's fine with me. You know, push something to the back of the stack, pop something from the front of the stack. So the same way. And so it's if I use a double-ended queue, all I do when I, when I pop something off the stack is I just move everything kind of over. This line could move over if you think of it moving over. And again, we'll talk about the double-ended queue here in a couple minutes. So if it's new to you, it's new to you in this moment, but it won't be new to you in a couple minutes. But like a vector, if I do eliminate from the front of a vector, remember, I have to copy everything else over, and that takes time. So that's why a vector is not a great first step toward using, you know, what data structure do I use when I'm creating a queue? It's not a great one to use. Uh, a, uh, for a stack it is, because if I'm always pushing and popping to the back, yes, nothing else has to be modified as I'm pushing and popping. But if I'm popping stuff off the stack here as a vector, I absolutely do. So NQ, DQ, that kind of stuff, you've, we've already kind of talked about this, kind of considered this here in this example. So let's see, double NQ, Q, keep on going here. So let's see, when, okay, so this is exactly what I was saying. When I'm removing an element from the queue, everything kind of else has to shift over. And again, that's all dependent on the data structure. If I'm using a linked list, no, I don't have to worry about that. If I'm using a double-ended queue, I don't have to worry about that. If I'm using a vector, I do have to worry about that for the example I just gave a, gave a minute ago. So just saying, like, what are the solutions to this? <laughs> Use a better data structure is usually the, you know, is usually the answer to that kind of question rather than reinventing the wheel and creating all this functionality, all this complexity for something you don't really need. So they, you know, they have the same idea. They're using a, a queue of integers, and so they have an integer pointer that's holding a dynamic array under the hood. They're keeping track of a front and a rear and all that kind of stuff. And again, we'll talk about this uh, later on in another video. And so here is the full header file for this queue class int queue. So nq dq is empty is full clear. You know, same deal. And so, you know, and you know, that kind of stuff. The basics of what we would need, and again, covered in, a, covered in another slide. So dynamic queues versus static queues. So again, we haven't talked link lists. That's a fun one. So don't miss that lecture for sure when that one pops up. So, you know, say it can be implemented using a link list. You know, say we will see that it's not, but we will see also that, you know, like a link list would be a, would be a good effort here because of the way that deleting and, and uh, pop pushing and popping elements from the stack doesn't affect all of the other elements in the stack like a vector does. So let's see, we can program our own routines. I mean, this is very, I mean, I think this is exactly the same slide, just this word is different from the, the stack example. So we can also use the standard template library implementation. And again, once we're, once we understand the concept of what's going on under the hood, we will 100% shift over to using the standard template library moving forward. Okay, so now we understand a stack, we understand a queue, so what is the difference here between a double-ended queue and a normal plain old queue? So, DEQ. I don't know why it's not D-E-Q-U-E-U-E, -E -E, but it probably is because it's really complicated. <laughs> 
I, I already screw it up enough times when I'm trying to spell this thing out. So double-ended Q, D-E, double-ended Q, a double-ended Q. It has member functions to NQ and DQ. And so that's what's cool about this is because it's double-ended, you can choose if you want to push and pop from the front, push and pop from the back, both, neither, whatever. Well, neither makes no sense, but one or the other. So you can choose how this thing, almost like an accordion, how this thing grows one end and you know, shifts the other. And versus a Q, obviously, where it's only one-sided, right? In, in the way that I can't push and pop from both sides anytime. When I push, I put it on the back of the stack. And when I pop, I take it from the front. So slightly different. But other than that, the, the same ideals. So it's a double-ended Q kind of takes, if you want to think about it, it takes the benefits of the stack and the Q because you can, you're basically stacking both sides and you can pop and push and do what you need to do. Maybe that's not the 100% definition of it, but again, you'll see this in the future video. It's not, it's really nothing complicated. And you, you probably use double-ended cues for a lot of things you're not even, you're not even noticing that you're using them. So syntax-wise, we don't have to necessarily worry about that. And that pretty much covers this demonstration. So that is all the slides, I presume. Yeah, so, you know, for this, for just the high level understanding, this is pretty good to go. Um, so thanks for sticking with it. And we'll see you in the next three uh, videos when it comes to setting these queues, stacks, and double-ended queues up in the standard template library using C++.